going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Lone Wolf Podcast. I'm your host, Wolfson. And today's episode, we got a special guest in the building. He is one of my closest homies all the way from L.A., California. He came around and we met together in during Winter Music Conference and Miami Music Week, along with our homies, Mostet. Shout out to those guys. He is the Nets up and coming bass producer, the one and only Shoku. Now, Shoku and Nahayel have a lot of history together, you know, and we've been staying in touch over the years as well. And as he and I progress in our own separate ways, you know, but it was amazing that he and I were able to catch up with some of the stuff that we both similarly share some of the experience of all the hardships of getting in your foot inside the music industry, especially when it comes to really see your music and how people only notice you if you got the validation of others like artists or, or labels and such. That's the only time people only notice you. And we talked about that, but we also talk about some other cool things, some recommendations, as well as we also talk about, you know, our history between us and our friendship and other stuff as well. So it's actually a very good episode. This is definitely an episode for all of our up and comers that are listening to our podcast, because this is actually dedicated for you guys. You're going to hear all the way from him how the L.A. scene really is and how hard it was for him to get into where he is right now, especially that route that we have talked that always heard about, like, don't always go with the struggling artist route. Never had a plan B, no safety net, just go straight to plan A, which, in my opinion, and Shoko's opinion as well, is a bad idea. And he explains it very well to why you shouldn't be doing that. Be sure to like and subscribe for your weekly episodes at the Lone Wolf Podcast for SoundCloud, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, and of course, the YouTube channel at LoneWolfPod.com. That's LoneWolfPod.com, where you can check all my latest episodes. You can also follow me at any of my social medias at Wolf's Music, including SoundCloud and Twitch, which you can actually check all my latest stuff. And as well in Twitch, you can find me all of my Ableton sessions, talk shows. And you can also follow me at Wolf's Music for any of my social medias, such as SoundCloud for all my music and Spotify, and as well as Twitch for all my gaming and Ableton sessions, you know. If you guys got something that you guys want me to cover, any specific topics or any specific experience that you want me to talk about, please hit me up at Wolves of Music at any of my social media platforms. Now, without further ado, let's get started. This is the Low Wolf Podcast. Boom! All right. What do we got? What do we got? Woo! Official, official, official. Bro, I don't know if you can see this, but here, let me see if I can get an angle. Yeah. Uzumaki. Uzumaki number seven. Damn. Now we're talking. Come on, bro. All right. All right. So, you know, you, so you're team Uzumaki, but, and I'm team Uchiha. I bet. Bet. I mean, look. Well, look at this. I, I call this the Obito's manga kill because these eyes are originally from Obito Uchiha. I don't care what anybody says. Like, no, that's Kakashi's. Like, no, Kakashi got it from Obito. Okay, recognize. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Recognize, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's the OG right there. That's the OG right there, man. So, and Obito's the one who created the Akatsuki. He's the founder. So I'm all Akatsuki. Team Akatsuki. But my I favorite character that. is Itachi Uchiha. That's my favorite character from the get-go. Even when he was like known to be the the villain of the story. Yeah. I uh, I, mean, I I just like I knew like I like this guy. Like there's something about him like I love about him. And then when they developed his story and and put it out there even more is like the reason why he's known as the villain, but in reality he's yeah. not. I was like Bro, this so I can respect that, bro. I mean, honestly, Itachi is one of my favorite characters. Respect, man. Respect, you know. Respect the Ochiha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Here, let me see. Okay, maybe make this a little bit better. I don't know how the audio is coming out. Uh, the audio is coming out great, man. In my end. All right, cool. All right, so nice. first things first, man. Like, welcome to the show. We already started since the moment that you log in, man. So welcome, oh. man. Thanks for having me, bro. I'm like, honestly, I've been I've been looking at you doing these podcasts for a while. I'm like, hmm, 
I wonder when he's gonna ask me to be a part of one of these things. So. <laughs> well, hey, you were still part of the list of people that I want to interview on my show, bro. Like I got one of those lists. I had to work out with the with my homies and then work mm-hmm. out to all my other homies that I know I want them to be in the show. And unfortunately, there's like a couple artists that they couldn't mm-hmm. make it because you know for whatever reason. Let's just say well, for whatever reason, you know. In my terms, I call it ghosting, but you know. <laughs> I feel like, hey, if you want to be part of my show, you're more than welcome to be it. But if if you don't want to, let me know, man. Just let me know. But don't just like ghost me or don't. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know you mean, yeah. C- communication is the key to all this, man. And mm-hmm. and he, I don't know if you've seen much of my shows, but most of the time it's just me talking nonstop shit and then talking about every single of my guests, their experience and I just want to want this show to be like a learning show to let everybody know what's all the shit that I, I had to go through, all the shit that my homies had to go through and every other artist who had to go through, you know, because everybody has a dream. Everybody wants to do something and people who want to be part of the music industry, you know, sometimes um, they don't know where to go, where to start or how to do things, you know, and they start doing right. things the wrong way, you know, things that how we learn. So I'm here to let them know, to guide them a little bit and say, hey, don't do that. Do this. Why? Mm-hmm. Because I did this or so and so did this. And this is the result. Mm-hmm. If you want this to happen, you have to do this, this and that, you know, and that's the whole point of the show, man. I'm always going to invite everybody to come in, man. It doesn't matter how big or small you are, man. Come to the show, man. And let's have a conversation, man, because that's what's all about, man. Oh, yeah. Well, again, thanks for having me, bro. I appreciate it. Me and you. For those of you guys who don't know, me and Wolfson go back a couple of years. I met him in Miami uh, when my manager, Kevin, actually brought me along to uh, check out the uh, Miami Music Week and actually stayed at this guy's house. Amazing hospitality. I suggest if you guys are homies <laughs> with him, go say what's up. Go visit, man, because he is dope. I uh, appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, man. I always am. I always want to make sure that all my people are like treated with respect and kindness and always tre- be feel like they're part of the, uh, something, you know, part of home, you know, but only the only people who are allowed to do that are only people that I fuck with that. I know that we have an instant connection like you and me. We had an instant connection. We click right there when you guys came to Miami and those are the only people I fuck with. Any other else is like, eh, I mean. Whatever, man. But yeah, man, we 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 met through Kevin, man. Shout out to that motherfucker, Camo. That crazy ass fool. <laughs> yeah, motherfucker. How have you talked to him lately? Yeah, he's been uh, you know, touching bases with me like once a week or like maybe sometimes more, just to like you know always keep up and be like, hey, dude, like, cause he's still my manager. So right, right. He's like, yo, dude, like, we, I need you to finish this song, you know, because we need to send it to these labels, you know, like mm. lately he's been on me more. So it's, it's cool, dude. It's cool to have somebody push you. That's cool. You know, like, but yeah, we've been, we've been, you know, just to make it short, we have uh, talked recently. Yeah. Well, that's good, man. That's good. Um, Most of the time we, it, we, I talked to him with, with Chavalo. Shout out to our boy right there, man. Chavalo. Yo, um, he's he always, he's a recurring guest to the show, man. I love uh, talking to him, man. If you see some of our episodes, every time we talk to each other, it's it's always something new to talk about. Like every time we see each other, it's like something came up and and you know shit happens, you know. And he and I are always got like some wild stories with each other, you know. Yeah, and, I haven't talked to him in a while, to be honest. He's how has he how's he been? Well. He's he's been doing good, man. Thankfully, he's been doing good. He's, he hasn't stopped making music. He's mm-hmm. just like not releasing. <laughs> right, right, dude. He is talented, man. Like, I just hope he releases soon, bro, because he he knows what he's doing. All this stuff's fire, dude. That like that was one of the arguments I was having with our previous guest, Mikey Barinici. Shout out to him. He was Mikey. part of. Yeah. yeah. As the boy, Mikey's, that was the, like the recent argument he and I, we were having about Chavala. We we're like, dude, the motherfucker is talented as fuck. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm surprised like no label has picked him up. And one of the issues is like, yeah, he has a release music and Camo is all the time on his ass. Like, dude, you got to send something. You got to send something. You got to finish this. You got to finish this. And every wow. time I listen to something new from him, it's just like mind blowing. I'm, I'm like, what yeah. the fuck, bro? 
when when can i have this when can i expect this bro yeah like and he's like never <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i'm just messing dude yeah but honestly bro like i can't wait to hear his new stuff so well er every week or every month is a new stuff so you know i mean just just hit him up just hit him up say like yo you got some new fire trucks like I got some trust for you. Like, let's do some exchange. And I'm pretty sure he's going to give you some future rhythm shit. Like, that's yeah. like, by the way, you're, are you into that future rhythm thing? Uh, I'm into all bass music, mm. but future, like future rhythm. I don't really. What do you mean by like future rhythm? Do you mean like Papa Khan? Like, like, I don't know if you noticed the trend that's happening lately that Disciple Records capitalized that. Um, Monster Cat has capitalizing that too. And another label, I forgot what was the label that um, Chavalo told me that's also getting into it. But it's basically all these um, artists, they're doing the whole melodic dubstep route now, but yeah. making it more oh. rid of me. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I, f I believe like Subsidia, like congratulations, by the way, on your releases on Subsidia, by the way. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate yeah, it. you deserve that, man. And and some thank of the Subsidia, uh, which is the one that's very melodic in Subsidia? Dawn, right? I I believe it's Dawn. Okay. So in it's either Dawn or Dusk. Obviously, it's not night. It's not night. So <laughs> No, no, it's not night. But it's so in Dawn, it's, let's just say it's Dawn. Um, there has been some of the tracks that are very rhythm but they're very melodic they're very flowy mm -hmm. like if yeah. like it's the the fat stevenson with the oliver style but very owls and crystal sky style yeah yeah i know i know what you're talking about yeah so you notice that that's like a new trend that's happening for the past couple of months that people are actually capitalizing in. have you ever thought of you know doing stuff like that or getting to that wave i mean honestly I do enjoy the genre. It's really fun. You know what? Shout mm. out Ace Aura. I feel like he's one of the artists that kind of solidified mm. that genre right now. He capitalized in the melodic bass. So, you know, shout out him. For me, I kind of like, I tend to be the kind of person to like, think, want to be outside of the box, kind of. Like, I don't like making things that everybody else makes. Mm. Just because... You know, it's it's nothing it's nothing against them. It's just I want to. I've always thought of myself as being that artist that is different. Mm. You know, like I don't know, man. And I, I, I'll be honest, I do. I have tried to make it. I have attempted to, but I was never really like a hundred percent comfortable okay. with doing it, just because it's not like me. Okay. You know, so like it's a fun genre. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think I could execute it as well as other artists do. <laughs> so you think that maybe it's some maybe. Probably yourself, you can't execute it. But if you say like, if you collab with somebody that's in into that, would you be able yeah. to be down to do something like that? Oh, definitely. For sure, dude. Okay. It's, it's such a beautiful genre. I'm the type of artist that loves like pretty melodies with filthy drops, you know, like so. It's that's perfect, man. If only I could, if I knew how to do it, I would and add my own twist to it. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, I can't execute that. <laughs> yeah, I can't execute it either. And you know what? I came back to do music again. And I started, I found like I can, let me just start with the basics. Let me get, just go very, how it, back to the times with melodic dubstep. And before you know it, I ended up being like, oh shit, you know what? I kind of like the melodic dubstep route that I went to. So I'm just going to stick with it. I mean, it's the, yeah. the drop with the heavy sauce and little stabs and growls here and there yeah. and then by the second drop i just make it very rid of me or very yep so you know and then it goes back i get to the melody just to reiterate yeah. you know so i mean i had lots lots of fun and it's something new that i normally not used to because if you listen to all my music most of the time you listen to either trap or dubstep you know the heavy shit mm -hmm. i've never done any melodic and it's it was kind of challenging for me because i'm not i'm not very into playing melodic stuff because I don't have like like the brains that most of these sick people do because most of, most of the time when I'm making a song my head is like I'm making a banger right. that's what I want I want to fuck shit up I want to yeah. I want to yeah. blow up your fucking speakers that's what I want I want that fucking fat bass to be thick as fuck bro you just want to smack them just every time that drop comes in it's like <laughs> bah, you know but, like bah. Bad, bro that that's what i want you know 
So when I did that yeah. whole melodic approach, it, it felt good. It felt kind of like, yeah. damn, like, like I can fuck with that, you know? And I'm always mm -hmm. a fan of melodic duster for the longest time. I love listening to it. I call it my happy music. Every time I'm not listening to something that's not dubstep, I call it the happy music because it's something mm -hmm. different, something that's yeah. outside of my genre. So, and you say yourself that you're more you're more into the heavy bass stuff. Now, most of the time, is it dubstep or trap or mid tempo? Any like, kind of bass, bro. Any kind of bass. I feel like okay. So I love it. Could be melodic trap. But with like mm -hmm. a heavy drop. Mm. And same thing for dubstep. You know, like not so much on the rhythm side, but on the dubstep side. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I, I don't know. You. There's been like a whole bunch of controversy with like, oh, dubstep and rhythm is the same thing, but there's obviously some differences. I mean, I can make the argument that rhythm and dubstep is the same thing, but I will say dubstep is a genre. And then rhythm is a sub genre out of dubstep, you know? So I, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Because you can't have you cannot have rhythm without the dubstep. You know, because yeah, I, rhythm came from dubstep because it all yeah. started with with the kick and the snare, kick and the snare, and then you got the right. basic shit, you know? Yeah, every every genre came from something else. Yeah. Just like so, just like as if you were saying, um, the do you remember Big Room? The big, the big room era. Where of do you course. think it came from? From house. Electronic. Yeah, electronic. exactly. From house. From electronic. Like mm -hmm. all these, all and house has like a huge amount of sub genres. You know. Yeah. There's. I don't even. I can't name them. There's too many. No. Now there's too many. It used to be just deep house, tech house, techno. Now there's a right. bunch of other like so many other genres that I don't even know about yet. Exactly, bro. So like it's it's the same concept with dubstep. I mean, dubstep has evolved from, you know, from what we call the bro step, from the melodic yeah. step, the I'm familiar with bro step. Yeah, with rhythm. So, you know, rhythm's part of it. Now this is the new fin, future rhythm. That's mm -hmm. that's the new thing. Um I guess mid tempo, but mid tempo was like more side by side with dubstep. It's not like maybe it got some ideas from it. I don't know. It's like a very gray area in mid tempo because mid tempo can go very techno and at the same time can go very heavy, nasty drop like dubstep. You know? Right. I feel like I feel like mid tempo is more experimental music. Mm. It's because it's like the possibilities are endless. It's not like a solid uh, foundation where every single mid tempo track sounds the same. You know. Right. So it's it, dude. Every genre has a bunch of different subgenres and it's like at this point I don't even know what's what. <laughs> I agree like there's so many of that. I mean, look yeah. at my if you listen to the intro of all my sh uh, episodes, it's a mid tempo track that I started, you know. It was just a simple bass that moves along here and there, it was something simple. Maybe I'll release it sometime in the future. I don't know whether I feel like it. But yeah, like and I like the con I like the fact that you don't stick yourself with one genre, like you said. You stick with all sorts of bass music genre. Like you're a bass producer. You're not just a trap the step or whatever. You're just a bass. Like whatever comes in your way, that's what I that's what you do, you know? Like you don't right. stick to one. You stick with whatever makes you happy. Now exactly. I feel like that's the beauty of being an artist. Now, when somebody tells you like, oh, you can only be like, you know, you can only succeed if you stick. If you master and stick to that one genre, do you agree with that? Well, to be honest, I used to believe it. Mm -hmm. I used to believe it when I was just starting out as an artist, just because when I'm looking at these big artists that are pay playing big shows, like, you know, S Skrillex, for example, like mm -hmm. a big example, he started off as a dubstep artist. And when he was releasing music, it was a lot of just dubstep growls, you know? So I thought, hmm, maybe I have to stick to one genre and continue making it mm -hmm. in order to succeed. But once Skrillex started expanding his brand and he started changing up his sound, it's like, yo, like he just opened up a door for all these other upcoming artists. Like, yo, you mm. don't have to stick to one genre. He makes whatever the hell he wants, you know, and it still bangs. So it's like that kind of motivated me to like think outside of the box. Like, yo, you know what? I don't need to stick to just one genre. And let's be real here. I don't think there's a lot of artists that 
like making one genre and just stick to that one genre, you know? I agree. And if, they, if they do, like, more power to them. But me, personally, I came from a musical background. Like, my uncles were, like, DJs. Oh. Yeah, a couple of my family members are, like, musicians and stuff like that. So I like to listen to everything. And I feel like that's the only way you can stay relevant is by being diverse. I I absolutely agree. And I didn't know about that, that you had a... A musical background experience from your from your family. Yeah. That that's actually pretty good, man. Yeah, dude. I mean, they're mostly like DJs. One of my uncles was a producer. That's oh. kind of what got me into producing. But he was more of a, like a hip hop West Coast producer. So like, that's why I I also I don't know if people know this, but I do make hip hop beats on the side. I just don't promote it, you know. So like, I work with different artists, like kind of like behind the scenes and type of stuff like that too. All right, keep it quiet, man. Keep it quiet. That's all you got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say too much. <laughs> but that's good, man. That's good because I got a, I got a few stories about that, man. Because one of the stories I will tell you is that as I, when, we, when I started as a DJ, man, I, I don't have any musical backgrounds. I'll tell you that. I, didn't, I don't know how to play a piano. I don't know. I didn't know anything about music theory. It was all fenced to the school that I went in right here in Miami, SAE Institute of Technology. It's fenced to them that allowed me to progress to where I am right now. Was I heavily influenced with music? Absolutely. Fenced to my own man. He taught me how to appreciate music genres, you know, because obviously when, uh, when, your own man, when you're in the car, your own man is always playing his music, you know, like you yeah. can't tell your own man, hey, put me some reggaeton, man. What's up? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. no, he's gonna tell you go no fuck you. It's my car. Go get yourself your own car and listen to your own music. Right. So uh, I've been heavily influenced by you know by people like Phil Collins, like Janney, and and such other bands like the um, like Guns N' Roses, Mana. You know, shit. Nice. So obviously I've been heavily yeah I got the taste for for it man and. And over the years, I listened to all sorts of music. And then over the years, I listened to all such genres in my face because I had my I had my skater face, my punk face, yeah. my hip hop face, then my yeah. reggaeton face. I feel you. I feel you. And then I, I'm, I got stuck with the EDM face, like in the EDM face, I never let go. So yeah. now I'm just like open to all sorts of genres, you know? Right, right, right. And I was always like that that when i want to make music i want to make all sorts of music because i feel like th there shouldn't be any limitations and let me tell you something as one pr professor from my school motherfucker has grammys with daddy yankee and wally guerra and diplo and other shit but i do never 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 liked his attitude because he was kind of an asshole well not kind of he is and <laughs> And when I actually show him some songs to him for feedback, you know, he says, like, weren't you making some house music like last week? Like, yeah, but, you know, this week I felt like I want to make some Moomba. Right. And he's like, stick with your guns. Don't don't switch genres. Like, be good at one thing and let that thing. Don't don't make other music. If you're not if you're going to be doing other stuff like, no, just stick with whatever you're good at it. And I feel uh. and I feel like. Just like how you feel like, man, OK, then let me just focus on that. And I thought that by sticking with trap and dubstep, let me just stick with that and let me go for it. And that's going to open up some doors. It did. Mm -hmm. But I f saw the limitations that I got myself because now I'm limited to that only, you know, um, right. and then I see my boy Needy Greedy. Shout out to that bitch. <laughs> I can say that because he he is one of my closest friends and he graduated with with me at that school. So that so so for anybody who's listening, everybody who's <laughs> listening, just FYI, he's my boy. That's why I'm saying shit like that to him. That motherfucker, he's a one of the most multi genre DJs in the scene right now. Like right. Besides Krillitz, can you name anyone other than him that's very multi genre on his sets or on releasing on his music oh man i gotta give love to the upcoming producers so shout out my boy akres okay akres in, in this building man yo he is fire bro he okay so when i met him mm -hmm. just a just a quick little story yeah, yeah when yeah. i first met him he was more into like well when i heard his stuff it was like jersey club okay you know, straight jersey club booty bouncing yeah shit, like you know <laughs> like that party shit yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. 
And then he started getting into like the dub, like the bass scene, like the dubstep scene. He started mm. releasing fire dub tracks, trap tracks, even like now he's like doing house. So it's like, bro, like you got to give you got to give it up to the upcoming artists, too, man. Yeah. I agree. I agree, man. That's why like you got to give me like other people who who actually are following that trend of no limitations. Do whatever makes you happy as long as yeah. it's good shit. You know, if you got the right. good stuff, man. Put it out there, man. Don't don't let anybody tell you like, no, stick with the rhythm. It's like, I agree yeah. that there's these some dubstep guys like they stuck. They got stuck with their fan and they're and they're well known. But here's the part that I want to get to to all this to this story. As an artist, you have to evolve. Right. Like you cannot 100%. stick with the same fan over and over for our that long because eventually it's going to be very monotonous and there's not going to be in that unique feeling that you have when you start first listening to that one artist, you know, like mm -hmm. you're going to tell me that excision hasn't evolved. Like that dude mm -hmm. was a heavy hitter from the underground dubstep mm -hmm. to now having Dub set and melodic dub set and future rhythm and other other shit. Like the guy has right. done other cool shit. Squirrelets. Um, what's another heavy hitter that we know that that has evolved from uh outside of the EDM? Let me give you one. Linkin Park. Oh my god, dude. I love Linkin Park. Linkin Park, one of my Linkin favorite Park. bands that I grew up as a kid, man. And I remember Damn. when they had the underground EP that nobody knew about it. And then they had the hybrid free CD. Um, when I was in my what? when I was in my sixth grade, and look how they progressed from that style to mm -hmm. mainstream shit that they are right now. You know what old they were. You know, but you see the evolution. And I remember that Mike Shinoda said it to himself in one of the interviews, like, like yeah, like over time you need to evolve and you need to keep up with with the times, like. Nobody wants to listen to the same heavy stuff over and over because, you know, that you're not unique. Right. And I mean, that's how they become successful. That's how they are successful. You know, they they make something they love, you know, even if it, it happens to be like the heavy stuff. And then as the years progress, they decide to, you know, maybe change it up a little bit. But they're still as successful because they've already gained that fan base. And no matter what, they will stick through them and they can make whatever the hell they want. And it's still quality stuff. Exactly. So, man, Rest in peace, Chester, man. Rest in peace, my boy, Chester. Rest oh, yeah. Linkin Park is one dope-ass band, man. One of the dopest bands that has ever lived and one of the best, one of the best, in my appearance, vocalists out there, man. Rest can, in peace, can Chester. Ask you a, of course, dude. Can I ask you a question regarding sure. uh, the album? What, what's your favorite song from Hybrid Theory? There's too many, dude. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't tell you, man. I cannot tell you either because that e that first album that they release all there's it's let me see how can I explain this Linky Park is one of those artists that has a album that you basically can listen their entire album without a fail and know every single lyrics of that album because every song yep. of that album is just straight fire like like I don't have a favorite in that album I can say that's my favorite album because paper cut and then you go then you go straight to the one step closer to the edge and then you go without you and then you go points of 40 and then you go runaway then you go crawling and then you go to fucking uh, and in the end yeah you know your stuff man like bro like i can't say there's a favorite song from them in that album bro like, it's too hard it's the same thing as the the marshall mathers album from eminem and the mm -hmm. Kamikaze album. Those are my two favorite albums from Eminem. The Kamikaze is pretty much, I think it's like on top of the first Marshall Mathers album. That because that was like the best diss album I've ever heard in my life. And it goes track by track by track by track by yeah. track that I know I every single. Like it goes hard, you know? Like it's very, it's very hard as an artist. It's very hard to have an album and your album is just popping on every other song, like every song. Oh, yeah. That's so, it's so difficult. There's many albums out there that have two to three good songs and the rest mm -hmm. of them are like, what? I don't know what they are, mm -hmm. you know? So it's it's rare. That's why they are goats, though. That's the that's how yes. they are who they are, you know, because they're just gifted. 
and they have diehard fans like from the first album to the most recent you know for any for any artist i agree bro uh, Man, but, okay since you brought up lincoln park though mm. give me a give me a top nah give me a top five of, of all the albums of all the albums? Yes, top five like that you can listen songs to. Songs or albums? Songs. Songs of of all times. Top five. Yes. I will have to say first, well, in my defense, this is in no category in any way. So okay. the the ones that I'm gonna be mentioning, they're all like my favorites of all Linky Bond songs. Yeah. So heavy is one of them. The last song that they sh put out there, so okay. that was very that Let's was talk very about one more light, right? One huh? more light. That's one more light. Which one? That's um from the one more light album, right? Yeah, it's the last album that they did before they went on tour be before Chester Bennington did his, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the I think it's the one more light album. Yeah, I think so. Like, but that was like the by far my favorite one out, out of that before he left. And then when he left, it was like, then this is like the song that hit me to the core, bro, because I heard his cry, I heard his 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 feelings. Like I knew what he was going through for that song. So that song actually like hit me hard so that was that deserves a top spot in my top five number two will go castle of glass okay that's definitely another one that hit me like amazing performance it was it's low key but you could still feel yeah. that licking park vibe from the and then now i'm going to bleed it out nice that's a good one yeah bleed it out is by far like hard hard you know and that's when yeah. they like they had like a huge hiatus of uh, after meteora meteora they had a hiatus and then they came back with uh, midnight express and then they start out with that song bleed it out which is like oh shit here we go all right yeah. um fourth oof um I will have to say without you from the first album, Hybrid Freery. Okay. And then the last one will have to be in the end. Because that's the okay. that's the one song that when I heard it for the first time, it like I wanna have it on repeat no matter where I go. Yeah. And now to this day, when I listen to that song. I still go hard on it, man. It's just, it goes very hard to me, you know? So of course. out of those fives, I guess I'll choose those. What are your top five? That's fair. That That's a really solid top five. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say five that you haven't said. Okay. But they're also my top five though. Yeah. So, oh, man, I honestly, I can give you a, a top 20, but I can't. So I'm going to, I'm going to just <laughs> go with the top five. So, uh, in, in no particular order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting for the end. Ooh, okay. Ooh. I love waiting Ooh. for the end. You saw the music video of it, right? It's so very glitchy. So, like, it feels like, damn, it makes sense. Got it, got it. Waiting for the end. Okay, dude, honestly, like, such a vibe song. You could sing it anywhere. You could sing it in your house. You could sing it out when you're driving. You could sing it, what, at a show. You know, anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So next, I'm going to go with, uh, let's go with Faint. Ooh. Faint you know, is a banger. <laughs> I was going to say Faint in my top five, but I was, yeah. I was look, I was thinking more of the songs that I listen a lot and, and that I sing a lot. Yeah. Faint was one of them, but like, you know, without you, like, I don't know, for some reason, it just goes hard on the lyrics, but Faint, yeah, I can, I can feel it, man. Yeah. Faint is like one of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah, especially when Jay Z sure. got into that, you know, when you got that Jay Z and they put that oh, fame in. Yeah, but it was also, I think that was um Numb, Numb as well. Oh, that, no, oh yeah, they did like a couple of songs, you oh, know? Yeah, Jay Z did that one. Jay Z did that. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if they did the other one, but they for sure did Numb. Yeah, they did Numb. Yeah. Because that Numb was, was like the only one that, um, the blowout, that, uh -huh. that was like, like, out of, out of all the songs that did on that collision course, that was the one yeah. that, you know, everybody was like, holy shit, I'm playing this, you know? Yeah. 
and then Jay Z just came out with the remix. I was like, "What, dude? That was insane. That's legendary, bro." Yeah. When you hear a rapper get on a rock song, like back in the day, like never. No, I Jay Z's. I think Jay Z was probably the only one that connected that bridge. You know, right? If anything, he started it. Or I, honestly, I don't know too much about other bands. Maybe there was other ones, but that one like really stood out to me. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's see. Number three. Let's go with Shadow of the Day. Number three. Okay. Shout out the day. I fuck with that, right? Okay. It's a, vibe. it's a vibe. I love listening to it when I'm driving in my car. You know, it's like a nice cloudy day. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be getting in my feels, you know, for one step closer. That's one like the closer. that's like the closer. That's like Ooh. you know you gotta close with that song. Like, no so far. For sure. Man. And what would you put your last song? Oh man, there's so many good ones left that I didn't say, but Probably the one that I like rock with the most that I play. Probably given up. I give it up. Yeah. That, that, that heavy ass track, bro. It, it just, yeah. And like, dude, when Chester does that 17 second scream, bro. Yeah, I thought that guy was gonna like run out of yeah. fucking breath. Like, how the hell did he not get a sore throat after that, bro? I don't know. And when he finished, he kept singing the rest of the song. So that's a major reason why it's on the top on the top five for sure. Because not a lot of not a lot of singers can do that. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, you give me some good ones right there. That that's for sure, man. And then yeah. So much more though. Hey, bro, I mean, we can stay here all night, talk about like all our top twenties of licking parts and shit, bro. We can like do that another time. Another time, man. Because bro. Linkin Park is the, dope, is the dopest band ever, man. I had to put it out there. I don't know any other band that can actually beat Linkin Park in my personal opinion. Maybe there are better ones, but I feel like Linkin Park is probably the only one that tested time and age well. Like you can still listen to their original music and it exactly. still still hits. It still hits, exactly. you know? Yeah, I would have never expected you to like Linkin Park as much as I do, even maybe even more, dude. Like, that is crazy. And if for some reason Mike Shinoda ever comes through and watches this video, you are a legend. Shout out to you, Mike Shinoda, bro. And Shinoda, yep. bro, please come to my show. Let's talk, bro. You're one of my favorite producers, man. Yes, sir. If he, if I could get Mike Shinoda, you know you, you'll you join over here to the show, all right? Dude, I will fly over there. In a <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. Have you heard some of his latest stuff? Um... To be honest, I kind of really held on to like his side on the Linkin Park. I have heard a couple of his singles, mm -hmm. but I haven't really followed him as heavy as I followed Linkin Park. I I follow I fuck with his stuff that he's doing lately, man. Like the last song he dropped was Happy Endings, which is actually pretty dope. Yeah, for sure. And and there was another one that that he actually launched like a series of uh of beats to sell, you know? Which is yeah. like pretty dope. What of his part? Like he's he actually put like free volumes of straight up fire beats, and he's like, guys, get creative, do shit. I yeah, gotta shout out to him, man. Shout out to him. He he's giving other artists opportunities as well. He yeah, is, he's kind of like how Excision is with the dubstep scene right now. Yes, I agree, bro. Yeah. Like he's doing he's doing his thing, man. And I like when producers and artists like uh, of that caliber come down and start helping the little guy, you know, because you don't get to see that very often, no? Mm -hmm. For sure. And and then I'm going to go back to, to your decision, man, because it's decision. I can see that Jeff has done so many good things and has done, has opened up doors that I'm pretty sure not many others have the balls to do it or not interested of doing it. Shout out to him, man, bro, because what, what he's doing with Satsidia and all his festivals, like he's killing it, man. He's changing the game. He's changing the narrative. That's the thing, the narratives. Tell right. me any other artist who does that. <sighs> I mean, there are, to be honest, there are not many, not many. He's one of the main ones right now. One of the, he is probably the biggest bass artist in the scene right now. Yeah, that's making oh, moves. That's being loud mm -hmm. because... Uh, well, I mean, also Virtual Riot with Disciple, you know, he it's the same thing, but I feel like Subsidia is kind of like the new upcoming label. Right. 
that's getting most of the attention right now. Right. I feel like in that particular way, Subsidia, I can feel that it's for the up and coming, you know, like they, right. I can feel like they're the ones that are trying to help up and comers, you know, get a chance to be out there, get a chance to be like, you know, have yourself your son on an actual label supported by right. big hitters and Disciple. Disciple goes more to the community, you know, they're in it for the community, but they're not so big in helping up and comers. You know, I at least I haven't seen that much of it. I mean, I feel like the round table round table was supposed to be that. Yeah. It was supposed to be that label from 12 Planet to to be able to help up and comers to, you know, if they want to join or be released on music. But you know, it's such that it has to be like you need to know somebody that knows somebody on their perspective. I don't know how it is on um, subsidia. Right. I I can see, you know, I, I definitely see where you're coming from. Mm. And don't get me wrong, like a lot of those, they, they do have upcoming artists on the on the labels that are very, very talented. But I feel like Subsidia just reaches out just a tad more because yeah. they, I've seen a lot of artists that I've never heard of on Subsidia, if that makes sense. No, absolutely, bro. And, and, and I'm not knocking off the Disciple at all, you know, because right. they did their whole remix competition in which they came and they bring out right. some up-and-comers that I've never heard of. But there was mm -hmm. already some up-and-comings that I already knew about. But again, I guess because the rules were very general. It says like, hey, if it's Skrillex joins... And as it has a better song than yours, that they're going to choose Skrillex. I get, I get it. You know, like they they're gonna go with what whichever sounds best. They did their best. Right. Like I'm not gonna knock that off out of them. I mean, but I I agree with you with Subsidia because some of the songs that I've listened to the compilations, like I said, I never heard of some some of these artists, and I have that on my phone. Like I have that on my phone, listening to their music because it's just dope. It's just like wow, okay. Like I even knew, and I like that Subsidia hopefully continues with this path of you know you know getting people out to be heard. You know, right? Of course. How do you actually got into Subsidia, by the way? Ah, I'm glad you brought that up because I mm. was actually just thinking about it. Duh. <laughs> so, shout out my boy J Six. He is the person that uh, helped me get into Subsidia. Mm. It was both of our first, the first uh, comp ever. Actually, right. I had a uh, had a project that I was working on, and I had no drop idea, right? So, right. So I sent it to my boy J Six, um, which, by the way, I met him through a, a Heavyweight Records Twitch live stream for like a promo session. Okay. So that's how I met. Him. Yeah. So fast forward it to when it happened, uh, we ended up making the collab, like making the song together. So the the first song without you that we have on Subsidia, is, yeah, that's the one. So. He's like, yo, bro, like, I'm going to send it to like a couple of big artists that might be interested in signing. So I was like, okay, cool. So I finish it, send it back to him. He sends it out to the labels. And he's like, yo, bro, like, uh, Excision is actually interested, which like tripped me the hell out because I'm like, really? Like, that's really freaking sick. I, it must be super, super difficult to get his attention. So it's such an honor to be a part of that comp. Like, the very first one, like, that really, really. Like I know my changed my life for sure. I'm not as big as I want to be yet, but that helped me get my foot into the door with this industry. Oh, really? Yeah. So tell shout out my boy J6, dude. Well, tell me more about that. So by you getting into your song into Subsidia, did that actually mm -hmm. open doors to other labels or other artists or such in the industry? So, yeah. So with releasing on Subsidia automatically opened doors for me. Mm -hmm. I have had offers from labels reaching out like, yo, send stuff to us, work with this artist that's a part of our label. I've gotten follows from bigger artists oh. thanks to Subsidia. So it, it did open doors for me. I haven't really made the move yet just because I'm trying to perfect my sound. Mm. And when I feel like I'm ready, then I'll push. Okay. But for sure, it has opened doors for me. There's some certain labels that I've been trying to get onto for years. That never really gave me the time of day. But thanks to Subsidia, it's kind of like, oh, now we know who you are. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at you. But that's kind of like not what I wanted. I kind of mm. wanted to be discovered through my talent alone, not just because it's, I'm, I'm known for like being released on a label, if that makes sense. 
Interesting that you say that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, dude, I'm grateful for every opportunity that I get. Everybody that contacts me for sure. Like, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's like, hmm, would I get this attention if I didn't have a sign, a sign track, you know? Mm. Yeah. I get, I get what you're saying because um, how many songs have I ever sent to you that you say that they're fire? A lot. <laughs> and I've done the same thing that, that I send it to. I've sent it to songs to Odd Prophets, to Dr. Ozzy, to mm -hmm. Snails. To even our boys, Moats, that shout out to Josh and Pat. Like, my boys. And they all say the same thing. Like, yo, you're, like, your songs are fire and stuff. Right. And it's funny because, okay, these guys tell me that my songs are fire. Mm -hmm. So why is these labels do not want to like sign to my songs? Like, is it because, I don't know, I haven't released it with someone else? Is it because like they're bad? But even though others... Other artists that are established in the industry say they're good. Is it like what is it that that puts the yeah. stamp saying like yeah, I, like people can come check on me, you know? And I don't know, man, because I feel like that's the problem with what's happening with this industry. Like, in order for you to be discovered, you either had to be like you had to be released on a well-known label. Right. Or you did a collaboration with said established artists and that's where people start noticing you. Man, that I can, I definitely, it like hits home, dude, because I kind of, under, I definitely understand what you're saying, actually. Mm -hmm. It's like, as, as, as hard of a pill it is to swallow, it's kind of the truth. You know, like this industry is not what it used to be. It's like, mm -hmm everything's changing you know so like at this point it's kind of about who you know and that, mm. that's not always the case but it's most of the time the case you know like the moment i got a release on subsidia i started getting hit up left and right yo bro let's collab yo bro let's collab before that nothing where were you you know, you know? exactly dude i'm working my ass off here i work all my music is here i make all my stuff here mm -hmm. and you know it's like It's a little, uh, it's kind of a slap in the face. Yeah. When people want to work with you only because of clout or people <laughs> only want to give you opportunities because they see you popping off now. And it's, it's for sure upsetting, you know? And you, you know, somebody could have a banger yep. that's an unknown artist and they won't sign you because they don't know who you are. Exactly. Man, I don't, I don't mean to be a negative Nancy or anything, but. No, no, I'm, man my experiences you know no this is what's all about this is the lone wolf podcast yeah. man this is us sharing our experience what we had to go through and the realities the harsh realities of this industry not everything is peaches and greens over here you know some of the shit is like literally straight up hardcore fats and that's one of the things why i started this show last year on march i'm about to hit one year with this show oh yeah dude yeah like One of the huge. congrats. Thank you, thank you, man. I hope that I can I can grow a little bit more with this podcast. You know, I'm trying my best. YouTube is not easy. I don't know why people oh, telling me YouTube is easy. Like bullshit, it ain't easy, <laughs> especially on a podcast. I don't know, uh, but I do have listeners. I do have listeners on SoundCloud for sure. In SoundCloud, I hear a lot of people listening to my podcast because every time I, I log into SoundCloud. There's always a new follower, a new follower, a new follower. So at least I know my sound clothes is happening, you know, and and I needed my own therapy, man. I needed my own voice to be out there because I feel like I've been keeping all this shit bottled up inside me and don't have a like somewhere to talk about or somewhere to talk to who about this sort of stuff. And I don't right. have anybody to listen or hear me. So The answer was the podcast. Here it is. It's Now I'm dope. it's super cool that you're doing this, dude. Like giving artists a chance to express their feelings, you know, and share their opinions because sometimes certain artists don't have the courage to speak up. Right. And you know, this is why you're here, dude. So, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, this is why I'm here to break those chains, bro, to to make sure, like, yo. Let's break the cycle. Like, what the fuck? Right. Like, yeah. Let's tell the straight up the truth that the industry is an ugly ass motherfucker. You know, this is the type of shitty shit that we see and we deal on a daily basis. Like, why yeah. do we have to be silent about it? Like, if we got like a fan or a follower who wants to be an up and coming and is asking mm -hmm. you for some advice, why wouldn't you give that advice to that person? Like, why right. is it that we have to like 
Why do you have to shadow ban it? Oh, but it's because it may be a potential competition. It's taking your That's spot. That's the problem with this industry, man. If yeah. somebody has talent, if somebody has passion for something, stand by them, support them. Why not, dude? Everybody has a story. Everybody work like these kind of people work their ass off, and sometimes they don't even get the recognition they deserve. I agree. You know, so I could name plenty of artists that are upcoming that I know are talented as hell and don't have any releases because they don't have a following. It's crazy, man. It's crazy out here in these streets. You feel me? I hear you, bro. <laughs> what it was back then that it was all about the music. Now it's more about who you know and how many followers do you got? Are you going to pull? Can you pull this? Can you move this? Mm -hmm. You know? So mm -hmm. what's your social media presence? What's all about that? And, you know, I, I gave up on that social media presence a long time ago because it, it got to a point like, bro, this is what I have to do just to put my name out there, just to keep, just to have a connection, just to have a, a network with somebody like. Yeah, to even stay relevant. Sometimes. Yes, just just even to stay relevant. Like, really? Yeah, I, I said myself yeah. like, nah, bro, like I, I'm, I'm not with it, bro. I'm not with it, especially all the all the shit. If you notice all the shit that's happening in social media nowadays, like anybody could easily get canceled by the stupidest shit or by the stupidest thing that would say like a perfect example fucking people from TikTok or these vulture cultures or these cancel cultures or woke activists. I don't know. Whatever you want to call yourself. They want to cancel Eminem because of the song that he did with Rihanna. Have you heard of that? No, I actually deleted my Twitter for that reason. Good for <laughs> you. Good for you. I haven't yeah. deleted my Twitter because sometimes I talk with Virus Syndicate and some others. And okay. Okay. Shout out to to Nick and Jay, man. But then well, sometimes it's before, entertaining. Before, real quick, real quick. Before, like, let me just chime in. Yeah. Um, I didn't delete my Twitter. I just deleted the app to stay away from it for uh, you know whatever the time may be, just to take a little break because everything has been drama lately. And to be honest with you, I don't want to delete it because San Holo follows me on Twitter. So let's <laughs> <laughs> just, just throw it out there. Shout hey. out my boy San Holo. You feel me? Yo, hey, I got virus following me. I got others following me as well. So obviously I don't want to delete that, bro. I want I want them to know like, yeah, fuck yeah, you know. But hey, I'm happy to hear that, that you deleted the app, man, because you're not missing anything other than, you know, people trying to cancel people or political bias and stupidity from here and there. It's like, it's a shit show. Like, I literally, I only see Twitter in my feed just to see the shit show, to see like, what, well, okay, what's today's drama? Yeah. And yeah, they're, they, they basically want to cancel Eminem because of the song he did with Rihanna, The Way You Lie to Me. The Way You Lie? Yeah, The Way You Lie. And Why? because there's a there's a he said there's a lyric that says something I forgot what was but they pointed out the phrase like he said this and I'm like really you want to cancel Eminem because of that that phrase like that song really out of all the Eminem songs of all the shit that he has said who said mm. way worse than that song. But no, let's cancel that one because of that. Yeah, yeah that's ridiculous, man. Bro. That is so ridiculous. People like, have gotten soft. I've been saying that for quite some time, bro. Like people are actually gone like very pussy lately. It's the new generation, man. It's the it's all them. I don't, it's not every single person but it's the majority of the tiktok kids yeah i can't cap that's what i've seen not to throw shade at anybody but no no yeah. I, it's the shit that i see i literally see this shit on a daily basis and i'm like in my head like when did this shit started that all of a sudden you're this righteous person out of left field like what the fuck yeah like, i don't know man it's it's a different time, dude. Times are changing. I I guess, but you know what? It's not a good thing because if... <laughs> of course not, no. Because if we got this, then, you know, we won't have a saying. Like, we won't have the saying to express ourselves. We cannot express ourselves anymore because you're going to have somebody judging you. You're going to have somebody throwing a negative comment 
or somebody's gonna say something otherwise, you know? Bro, tell me about it. I've already experienced that multiple times. Just because, okay, for example, if I could, if I can say this, go for it, man. Turning down collabs, mm. turning down collabs, mm. you know who you are. Say it, bro. <laughs> say nah, it. dude, I'm not. I'm not here to point names or anything. But Good. don't say any names. Just say yeah. that. Yeah, you know who you are. Yeah, you know who you are. There are kids where I have gotten backlashed for mm. rejecting collabs. Mm. And I'm just like, why? I'm sorry that I don't feel we are compatible or I don't know you and you want to collab just for clout or it's another reason. I just, I'm busy at the moment. You know, I'm backed up on projects. That's majority of the time, the reason. I'm, and to get backlash and to, to get talking down on negatively or behind, behind your back just because you say no, that's so wrong. Oh, I had people, I'm, 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 you know what? I'm very honest from the get go. So that way I don't, they don't feel like I crush your dreams altogether. I always tell people, if you're going to send me music, I can't guarantee you that I'll respond to you immediately, but I will mm -hmm. listen to you. And if I feel that it's good, I'll tell you if it's bad, I 50, 50. So I always let them know it's like, I'm not going to bullshit you or anything. And when it comes to collabs, um, I have a problem with uh, collabing with people. And it's the and the problem is, is that my mind is moving forward every time. I'm always like, let's go, let's go, let's go oh, on right. to the next one, on to the next one. And the right. people that I send projects, they're not in my pace. And then they got and then that project gets lost. And then I'm like. All right, on to the next one. On to the next one. I can't. I can't right. stop. I cannot stop because of you. I had right. two opportunities. Two. I had two collabs with with Nitty Gritty that will never see the day of light coming out because, mm. and and it's not on on his fault because he's a talented person and I love the guy. But it's because he, I get in his defense, the guy's blowing up. He has so many projects with so many people that he has to make music, not only to himself, but for other artists as well. So me versus and his priorities, like I'm down here. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah, I could see. I could see why. Yeah. So like yeah. I can understand on, on his defense for that, you know. But at the same time, you know, like, yeah, I don't want to be on your ass every week if you work something or not. But, you know, at least tell me whether you're going to work on it or not, because then I can just finish this song on my own, you know. And then after that, I just decided, like, I'm finishing all my songs to myself. Like, you know, I'm not doing any collabs anytime soon or with anybody. If And, you know, not with him, but with other people, I've done collaborations and when I say I don't want to work with you anymore, I get that, you know, that we're on the streets. Hey, somebody was talking mad shit about you. It's like, yeah, why? What they say? Oh, fuck that end guy. Fuck Wilson. It's like, wow, cool. Because I try to help somebody to be known in the industry, to know all these promoters that I know. And I'm and I'm the end guy. I'm the fuck. The, fuck Wilson. I, yeah. Fuck me. Right. Because Man. I because I stopped fucking with you because I knew you were somebody that I, I don't want to fuck with. Like, oh, okay, fuck yeah. me. Right. I got it. I got it. You can't please everyone. That's the biggest thing, dude. You cannot please everyone. Oh, yeah, bro. Boy, did I learn that the hard way, you know? Oh, for sure, dude. Uh, yeah, we all have. Well, most of us had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Me, one of them. <laughs> so in regards to that, to like people talking back shit about you backlash has that ever affected you in any way in the industry not that i know of the way i see it is if someone's unhappy with you just keep it pushing because there's no reason to stay on that subject of negativity mm -hmm. like not that i know of like just to answer your question not that i know of I mean, there's there's so much I can go into detail with, but it's 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 just better probably left better unsaid. Let's just keep it at that. <laughs> all right, all right, that's fair enough, fair enough, man. I'm not here yeah. to to out people out. Maybe sometimes I will because like, oopsie, I forgot to say that out loud. You know? Oh well. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe we could talk about we can get into depth with things like that whenever, dude. Just you know, 
Hit me up, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. I get you. 